Good afternoon, gentlemen. Well, it's time for another video. I've had several of you send me emails and uh, ask me questions about processing larger volumes of silver. Now, the silver cells set up for 50 ounces at a time, uh, but 50 ounces is not much when you're dealing with silver. Uh, for gold it is. For silver, uh, I do upwards of hundreds of pounds sometimes. So you need to learn how to process large volumes of silver. Now this has been a learning curve for me as I transition from a hobbyist refiner to a commercial refiner. Well, there's certain things that I can and can't show you in my business. Uh, but we're back out at the farm today, so I'm just shooting an educational video and I'm going to show you how you can process large volumes in a five gallon bucket up to 10, 15 pounds at a time. And what we have in front of me is a few of the items that we're going to be using that I'm going to explain to you what we're using each one of them for and uh, teach you a few lessons along the way. And if you wonder what that is, floating around, waving in the wind there, I hung that up because I wanted to uh, give you an example of the airflow through my uh, shop here out on the farm. Uh, there'll be a lot of gases and things that come off of this process, and this is a kind of a process you can't do in a fume hood, but my whole lab is vented. I'm pulling about 3,000 cubic feet of air through here a minute as you can see by the paper and that makes it possible for me to work with this type of solutions without any gases building up. You don't want to do this in your garage, you don't want to do this in your house, you want somewhere where you've got a good airflow at and you can see that from the sheet of paper that I have waving around there. Now. Let's go up here and let me explain a few things, what these items are, and let's get this paper here out of our way. Okay, the first thing we want to start with is our silver. And in a five gallon bucket over here, I've got about seven, seven and a half pounds of silver that I have dissolved from uh, some sterling silver that I'm doing for a client. And uh, this is really a small batch. Uh, I have other ways of processing it, but seven pounds is a small batch, so this is how we're going to process this. Now, over to our left right here, what I have is this is a five gallon wine jug. And on top of this wine jug, I have a neat little contraption I'm going to show you. This is a piece of clear Pyrex tubing that I have attached to a piece of hose. That piece of hose runs around and goes into this rubber stopper right here. And normally this stopper, you ju it just sticks and sits right on top of this carboy here. And it has two pieces of glass tubing coming out with a bend on them for the hose to connect to. Now, when I first made this, I broke this one off right here, but uh, I've learned to be a lot more fragile with these glass pieces. I just took me a stopper that would fit my carboy. You could probably get a plastic one. Uh, this is only going to be a waste disposal bucket. So, as you can see, I've got some iron oxide around the bottom of it. You never really have to clean the inside of this thing. Uh, the chemicals that I draw off will usually eat whatever back on it is on the inside of it. So it's not real important. This is just a waste jug. I picked this up at a yard sale, I think, for $10. I found me a stopper on eBay for about $3, ordered it, drilled me some holes, and stuck my glass tubing through to the other side. Now, when this is fitted in here and on top of this, I'll connect the vacuum line right here. And that vacuum line comes from an HVAC vacuum compressor that I have outside. They're $60, $65 on eBay. Get you one of them. It'll save you a fortune in work. But I connect my vacuum to this side. 
it creates a vacuum in the jug and draws the solution out of whatever that I'm trying to suck the solution or the can off and it sucks it up through the tube and into the jug for disposal because if you try to pour these solutions off you'll disturb the silver in the bottom and you'll have to let it settle and you darn sure can't run all that through a Buckner funnel so when our silver precipitates we're going to let it precipitate out and then we're going to take this glass tubing and we're going to draw the liquid off into our carboy and the reason this is clear is because as you're sucking the, the solution out, you want to be able to observe what's going up that tube. You don't want to be down there in your silver sucking your silver up in your waste uh, receptacle over here and not know it. So this tubing is clear for a reason. I got this tubing off of eBay. I think I got that piece for three dollars. So now that I've explained the, the vacuum part, down here in front of me I have some copper bars and these copper bars this one particular here probably weighs two pounds and this is copper stock you don't want to use copper wire for this much silver because it will come out real trashy and it, it it's just not good for it you want to use something with a big flat surface and that's why we're going to use this copper stock now I bought this, I bought it from a fella off of eBay and I pay like $4 a pound for it when I buy it like this. Spot price is $3 or so a pound right now. If you have access to this bus bar, that's great. If you got a scrap yard that'll sell it to you below spot, that's fine. But $4 a pound for this copper bar and it shipped right to my front door, I'm not really going to argue about it. And plus, people there's expenses involved in this if you can't one of these bars one pound of copper will precipitate three pounds of silver now a pound of silver is about four four hundred and fifty dollars right now so you're telling me that one pound of silver for four dollars to make twelve hundred dollars or so if you can't afford a dollar or so extra a pound, then you don't need to be trying to run this size of a, a silver batch. Uh, the reason I'm showing you this is some of you may want to run larger volumes. Uh, most of the guys with the smaller cells, you'll want to stick to my other video. Now, down here in front of me, we have a mixing paddle. I bought this at a uh, home supply store for like four dollars and this is just a painted steel mixer is what it is and let me explain things being sacrificial in this process now this thing will eat away over time from the nitric acid solution but we're going to use this to stir our solution with it's only three or four dollars and I've probably done mm, I've done a thousand pounds of silver with that mixer right there and if I can't afford three dollars for a mixer to do a thousand pounds of silver there again you're in the wrong business what we have here in front of us is uh, I think it's 304, it may be 316 stainless steel jewelry craft wire. I got that off of eBay. I got 50 foot shipping it off for like $4. And what we're going to do with that is we're going to suspend our copper bar in the solution over here and we want something that nitric acid or silver won't react with. So that's why we're going to use the 300 series stainless is because it's resistant to nitric acid now back over to our copper bar right here the thing I wanted to explain besides one pound of copper will precipitate three pounds of silver is the way I'm going to suspend this in our solution and what I have here is just a set of surgical clamps and that is 400 series stainless it has the iron in it 
and over time it may corrode or oxidize just a little bit but anything that falls off in our solution uh, is really not going to contaminate it that much because this is just a recovery process. The refining step is done by the cell. So any impurities that may come off of this will be refined out in the end. But these are another sacrificial item right here. Uh, trade day two or three dollars and if you do a few hundred pounds of silver who cares throw them away and buy another set don't gripe about a few dollars now there is some things that I get frugal on I mean I don't waste money needlessly but for things like that it you know you just gotta calculate those into your cost now also in front of me I have a drill and I'll explain what we're going to use. Well, it's pretty self-explanatory, I guess. The drills used for the paddle mixer. And what it is, is when we drop our silver out of this solution, we're going to have six or eight inches of silver in the bottom of this bucket. And it falls off in clumps. Well, when you go to the vacuum filter with this stuff, it makes it a little harder to vacuum filter. Uh, it makes it harder to clean because it's clumped together. So once we drop all of our silver in the bottom of this bucket, we're going to take this paddle drill right here and we're going to stir it around and chop it up real good. And it's not really a necessary step, but when you're trying to clean seven or eight pounds of silver, uh, it you know you create a lot of waste solution and anything you can do to improve your process will improve the quality of your product at the end so we're going to chop that stuff up real fine so when we introduce it into our Buckner funnel that it'll clean real nicely now also down here in front of me I have a couple of things I want to show you if you're running larger volumes of silver, I would recommend that you pour large bars. And what happens is, is with the silver shot, it's designed for the smaller cells to be digested quicker. So we give it a lot of surface area. But with that surface area, we also have a lot of residual powders that are left over in the filter basket whenever we finish a run. Well, if you was to do that trying to run large, large pounds like I am, what would wind up happening is you would generate a lot of powder. But when we pour these, and this is a kilo silver bowl right here, so uh, we're going to pour this, or excuse me, it's a kilo gold mold. It's actually a pound silver mold. I'm going to pour these in one pound ingots for introduction into the silver cell. And the reason being is once this ingot dissolves, it leaves almost no powdery residue in the bottom of your filter basket. There again, it's just a more efficient procedure. You can recover all the silver that's left in the basket from the shotting process because you're going to reintroduce it into your feed stream at some point to recover it. But with this, it's just more efficient. What I have here in front of me is a salamander clay graphite A2 crucible. And this crucible will hold uh, about a pound, a pound and a half of silver, I believe, somewhere around in there. And the way that they rate a crucible, when it says it will hold a kilo, it means that it will hold a kilo at 80% capacity. That's how they, they calculate. And that leaves you room, you know, you don't want this thing filled all the way to the brim trying to move it around. You'll slush it out. So you want to fill it only 80% to capacity. And this crucible right here, with shipping it all, was $15. Now, you can buy the cheap clay crucibles off of eBay and save a few bucks. But let me tell you, you get what you pay for. This crucible here comes already coated with a glaze on it. And you have to fire this crucible before you could use it to melt the glazing. Then you could add your silver. Now, I've probably used this crucible, 
I bet you I've used this crucible 25 times by now. And the difference being is, if this was a clay crucible, it would have probably cracked or been shot by now. So, uh, you know, for 15 bucks to use it as many times as I have, I'm not going to complain about it one bit. Now, uh, let me see what else I have to explain. And what we have over here is our buttoner funnel. Now, this is a small Buckner funnel. It would be all right for the 50 ounce sale. But over here, I'm going to have about seven pounds of silver. And I'm going to take this back to my other shop. And I'm going to filter that through a tabletop Buckner funnel. It'll be a lot quicker to filter. Now, I could theoretically, and I have in the past, filtered seven pounds through a Buckner funnel, but it's larger than this. Uh, that would probably take you about a good two hours to filter that and clean it up in a smaller version Buckner funnel. Now, what I wanted to explain about the Buckner funnel is you see those perforated holes in the bottom right there? Well, your filter paper is only pulling through the portion where the vacuum comes through through the hole. So it has to work by wick action to draw this from this empty space into this area. When you have something like any silver chlorides or anything that may clog a Buckner funnel, uh, it really, really slows down your filtration time. So what would be ideal is if we could pick that filter paper up and give this surface underneath here uh, more space so it could draw also. So what I've got for that over here is a piece of fiberglass window screen. And you can get this at Lowe's or Home Depot. It's just replacement window screen. Take you a pair of scissors and cut you a circle out of it. And as you can see, it has holes in it also. And what that does is when you put it in the Buckner funnel, it raises the filter paper off of the holes and it gives it more action on the bottom surface of the filter. So there's a little tip that'll speed up your filtering time. Now you can order these off of eBay and they think highly of them. I think they wanted $10 for a pack of three of these. But hey, if you've got an old window screen laying around or you want to pick up some of this, it's only a few dollars at Lowe's. Just take you a pair of scissors, measure your butter funnel, and cut you out some of these. Uh, it's another little handy tip. Now, everything that this is setting on here, this is just a 2x4 with a hole drilled dead center of it. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to take it and we're going to place it on top of our five gallon bucket, just like that. Now, the purpose of the screw in the top is so we can wrap our stainless wire around it to suspend our copper bar in our solution. The hole in the middle is for this tube that I have over here. And what this is, is a piece of PEX tubing supply line. You can get it in the plumbing department. And it's like three or four dollars. And we're going to insert that tube here in a minute down in that hole. And the two by four goes to steady the tube in the middle of the bucket so it won't move around on you. Now, what I have here is an aquarium bubbler pump, just like you add to an aquarium to uh, oxidate the water for the fish. And the purpose of this is we're going to place it in the bucket with the copper bar. And the air will bubble up on the copper bar and provide agitation to the solution. Cementation is a slow process if you don't have agitation because the silver nitrate actually has to come in contact with the surface of the copper bar for the chemical reaction to occur. Well, without any agitation in that bucket, it would take quite a while. So the purpose of the air is to agitate the solution, plus it keeps the silver scrubbed off the surface of the copper bar, which leads to a quicker reaction time. 
Now, for seven pounds or for any cementation prop, uh, precipitation, uh, that bucket approximately two days, 48 hours with air agitation and all seven pounds of our silver should be precipitated from that solution. And when we think it's all precipitated, I'm going to film on and give y'all little pointers as to how you can tell what it's done. But when it's done, you can just add some chloride to a little bit of your solution. And if you get any uh, silver chloride formation, you know it's not done. But usually 48 hours with air is more than sufficient time. And this is just connected by some PVC tubing that you uh, buy at Lowe's or somewhere like that. And here... What I have is I have adapters because these hoses are different sizes. You can uh, just take one size hose and stick it inside of another. You don't have to have any special splices or anything like that. So now that I've explained each item to you, I guess what I'll do now is uh, I'll go ahead and set up our silver bucket here and get our air ready to introduce into it with our copper bar and uh, we'll start precipitating silver out of this bucket. Now if you'll notice I have new cardboard underneath this and behind it. And the reason being is you move around these solutions and transfer them, there's going to be drops that come out. And I'm not really worried about losing a, a few drops here and there for the sake of all the cardboard I would have to burn to recover this. But the reason that there is in case you have a spill, a drip, anything like that. But my purpose in this demonstration is, is because when the silver nitrate hits the cardboard and it's exposed to light, it will turn purple. So the cardboard is there as a marker. And I'm going to show you how careful I am. And I'm probably still going to get some drops here and there. And that's the purpose of the cardboard is to demonstrate how easily this stuff can splatter out on the other surfaces. If you've got concrete somewhere where you're doing this, there again, don't do it in a garage. Because anywhere this stuff hits, it's going to stain with a purple spot. So, I'm going to go ahead and break away now, and we're going to get everything set up, and I'm going to show you how to start precipitating your cemented silver from this silver nitrate solution. Alright gentlemen, we're back, and we've got everything set up, and we're ready to start precipitating our silver from the solution. And as you can notice, I've got the PEX tipping stuck through the 2x4 into the solution. I usually push it all the way to the bottom and pull it up maybe a half inch or so. Because what happens is this silver precipitates, it's going to pack down on the bottom, and it'll actually pack around that bubbler and cut it off. Now, above that we have our copper bar, which is attached by a pair of forceps back here with our stainless wire on them. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to hang this right over the side into the region down here where you see the bubbles coming up at. And as the solution comes across the surface of the copper bar, it'll effectively make our silver precipitate quicker. And with our copper bar, we want to lower it down to about a half inch below the, above the bottom of the bucket. Now I'm going to take this copper bar and I'm going to suspend it in here and I'm going to give you an idea of how quick this silver will start precipitating. Uh, it'll take about 48 hours, everything will stir and churn and after 48 hours I'll test it and if everything's out of it I'll pull this off my bucket, I'll let it settle 24 hours and then I'll come in and I'll decant the bucket until I get down to the silver with my vacuum setup that I have that I showed you earlier in the video. So, let me get the copper bar now and see if I can hold this camera at the same time. I got a light set up above me because it's kind of dark here in the shop and you can't see very well. Let me switch hands. Grab this copper bar. And I'm just going to lower it down in there like that. And as you can see, we've already got silver precipitating on the copper bar. 
Now if you have a weak solution, this may take longer. You could actually see the silver breaking off. We hang this up here and you just want to hang it up there and twist the wire a couple times and just let it hang. And you can see the silver precipitating on the bar there. And you can see that the air is gently agitating it and carrying it away from the bar. If that phone will quit ringing in the background. And you can see the silver as it stirs around the solution air. And you can notice there is a lot of silver coming off that bar. Now as this finishes precipitating, it'll build up on the bottom of the bucket and this bar will be eat up. All it will be left is a little short nub where I have the forceps attached. And what I do with those pieces is just throw them into the next batch. Uh, what it don't eat out will be a big chunk so when you're cleaning this up you can pick it out and throw it right back into the next batch. But as you can see, our silver is precipitating at a pretty good rate. And it'll do this for, like I said, the next 48 hours or so. It'll slow down after about 24 hours and then about another 24 hours you ought to be able to pick that bar up out of the solution and rinse it off with your wash bottle and uh, stick it back in there for a minute or two and when you pull it out if there's no silver on it then you're good to go. But you also want to check with some uh, table salt. Just pull a drop or two of your solution out, add two drops of water to it, and add a grain of table salt. If it turns cloudy, cloudy white, that's silver chloride. You still have silver in the solution and you need to run it a little bit longer. But like I said already, 48 hours is usually good. And you can see that we're getting a good agitation there. It's almost like a fish tank, and you can see that there is silver suspended in the whole solution. Now as this packs up on the bottom, it'll start to get more compact and it's hard to wash. So in the next step, once I get this solution off, I'm going to take my mixer and I'm going to paddle mix this to break everything up into real fine grains, single grains. That way when you're washing, the water can completely cover the surface of the crystal grain to wash it. If it's packed with three or four other grains like it is here, that's thousands of grains. Solution tends to get trapped in those grains. Yes, it can be washed out, but with your procedure, if you're doing things right, you can make it a lot easier on yourself and produce a lot better product. So, there's nothing much more to see here. We'll probably go and come back. Uh, I'll film a little bit at 24 hours, and then I'll come back at 48 hours, and we'll remove this. And uh, I'll show you the silver in the bucket, and we'll start to get some solution off. So, I'll see you gentlemen in a day or two.